Well, the aim of today's lecture is to do the image processing. As you can see here in the figure, we have the original layout in our lab. As you can see here, here the red lines here, these crossings in the, on the floor of our lab tree. And then here we have the black and white photograph. Here, this is the, the intensity of, of light. And here we have two layers of this photograph, of this image, of this picture that are so interesting for our objectives. So the aim of today's lecture is to explain to you how can we manage this image representation in order to detect the line to follow. Because remember, the main objective of the control of our aircraft is as follows. If you remember here, we have the angle control. This is provided by the manufacturer, okay? Here we have the set point for the angle. Let's say uh, pitch angle, roll angle, your angle. And here we have the measure of this angle. So nothing to do with this, okay? Because it's provided by the manufacturer, okay? As you may remember on previous lectures, we have this model, the model taking this as the input and this as the output. This is the linear speed, okay? In this case, in this diagram, is the lateral speed because it's on the y-axis. Remember, the aircraft we have here, the x-axis, we have here the y-axis, okay? And the z goes through the center of the Earth, okay? Well, here we have a sensor, so we have this information, so nothing to do with this. We, we, you, have this you have designed this controller. This is a PI controller, remember, for the linear speed of our aircraft. So we have here a cascade, remember the preceding lecture. But now, the, the set point for this linear speed will come from the controller of the position of our aircraft. And what's the position? What's the set point for the position? Here we have the set point of the position, and here we have the real position of the aircraft. So it's the triple cascade loop, as you can see here in the figure. But the problem now is that we don't, we cannot trust the measuring, the, the sensor measure uh, about the position of the drone, because it's a consequence of an integral operation. So, integral operations can have uh, a drift, okay? Can have a deviation from the real value. So that's why we're going to use the zenithal camera, the bottom camera of the aircraft. Remember, we have a line here. Can you see this red line, okay, on the floor of the lab? I told you before. And the objective, the main objective, is to make the aircraft to follow this line. Okay, that's the idea. We're going to use the zenithal camera. The zenithal camera is in here. Okay, here at the bottom of the at the bottom of the aircraft. Okay, and this zenithal camera will provide uh, many photographs, many captures per second, and the remote computer will do the image processing. I'm going to explain thoroughly today, in order to get the, the exact position of the aircraft, okay? So that's the aim of today's lecture. How to do, by means of the remote computer, the image processing in order to get the exact position of our aircraft, in order to compare this position with the set point. The set point is zero, both for the distance to the line and the angle in relation to the line. I want both set points equal to zero, okay? Well, the, the path following algorithm will be explained in the following lecture, okay? But from now on, on today's lecture, the aim is only to get the exact position of the aircraft in order to have this feedback, to have this comparison, and then to apply the feedback controller 
for the for the position of the aircraft this controller this control strategy will not be a pi controller will be a trajectory control and i'm going to explain this on the following lecture so today we're going to focus on how to compute the position the exact position of the aircraft uh, related to the to the line on the floor okay well in order to fulfill our objectives, we have a bottom camera, okay? And the pictures taken by this bottom camera has, uh, well, this aspect, okay? The image resolution of the bottom camera is what we call 360p. It's one ninth, one ninth sorry, of uh, a high definition picture. So it's 640 pixels, in this direction, okay, in the x direction, and 360 in this direction, okay? So, we hope, if we have this, we hope that the line is straight in the middle of our picture. So, one thing that we must take into account is that for uh, according to the aim of this subject, we are not going to to deal with the axis transformations. So, what do I mean? If we have the aircraft and we have the floor, okay, I'm not gonna study in this course the relationship between the axis, the axis in this aircraft according to the axis on the real world. So we are not going to use these axis transformations. We are going to use only the coordinates in the picture. Okay. So the aim for the control strategy will be to have the straight line in the middle of our picture because axis transformations will not be taken into account. We have a different optional track, a different optional course, a different optional subject where I take into account these axis transformations. But in this short course, we will consider only the image. Those of you who are interested in this, you can contact me at my email account and I can give you the, the information that is missing. It's uh, intentionally missing, okay? Well, let's first explain how a picture is taken, okay? This is what we call, let's figure that we have a C, CD sensor, okay? An array, yeah? This array, this array of pixels, yeah? In our camera, they have a sensitivity on the intensity of light, okay? So the idea is that all of these pixels will be previously filtered by what we call a value mask, okay? As you can see here, we have four pixels. Can you see here? Yeah? And these four pixels, we have the R, G, B pictures, red, green, and blue. And you can see that we have a pixel in blue, a pixel in red, but this Bayer mask has two pixels in green color. This is because the human eye reacts or has more sensitivity to the green color. That's why in order to reproduce the sensitivity of human, uh, of human sight, the bio mask has double the number of green pixels than the number of blue and red pixels. That's the idea, okay? So we have an RGB image that is composed by the R layer. Then we have another matrix that is the green layer, 
And then we have another matrix that is the blue layer, okay? But the green layer has double the intensity than the red and the blue because we have double the sensors. That's the idea. So a variable, let's say I from image in the MATLAB workspace will have three matrices, as you can see here. One for the red, one for the green, and one for the blue. And obviously the green will be the result of a higher reaction to the intensity of the green color bandwidth. Okay? That's the idea, the general idea. But what about this other representation of images? This YCBCR is what we call, we call the chrominance, okay? The chrominance. Well, this representation has a, 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 a close relationship to the RGB representation. Well, at the end, here you have the matrix, the linear matrix, all the coefficients that connects the RGB picture. Can you see? the R layer, the G layer, and the blue layer, and the three layers of the chrominance representation. Okay, because here we have R, it's for red, G comes from green, and blue comes from, uh, sorry, B comes for, for blue. Here we have I for the intensity. This is intensity. Intensity. This is in general, the black and white picture. So Y, this Y, is the black and white. Well, as you can see, this black and white picture has been generated like this. It's one third, more or less, the R layer, okay? 0 0.6, more or less, the G layer, and the blue has only a 10%. So the intensity, the black and white picture, is composed by one third the R color, one sixth, uh, sorry, one here, well, it's a, it's a 60 percent, the G color, the green, and only a 10 percent of blue. Well, uh, where, uh, when it comes this, this kind of representation? It's about the appearance of color, color TV, okay? What uh, this was in, in the 50s of the preceding century, okay? Well, the general idea is as follows. Let's figure out that we live now in the 50s, okay? And we at home, our family, they, uh, we have uh, a black and white device, okay? But color TV has started. The problem, the problem is that in some, in some uh, houses, in, uh, uh, at some places, there are still black and white televisions, okay? But we have some other places that have both new color TV devices, okay? So we have to share the same color TV signal for both, okay? That's the general idea, okay? So the chrominance representation appeared in these times, in this era, because we can send the black and white signal besides some other signals in other channels in order to generate the color image. So, if you have a black and white TV device, this device will only have this signal, will only receive this signal, while a color TV will receive the three layers. That's the idea. I'm not talking about digital signals. I'm talking about analog signals, okay? But the idea is that a, a black and white device will only have this information. That's not the same on the RGB representation, 
because you will see later that the R layer is not real, the G layer is not real, and the blue layer are not real. Only why this is the black and white device. So these numbers has been found by experience. Okay, that's the idea. Well, what about the blue? What about the blue? The blue is also the chrominance on blue. That's the name of C, B is the chrominance on blue. It's, the, well, at the end, the same, the same general idea. It's a combination on R, G, B. Okay, that, that, that's the idea. And the chrominance in red, it's also a linear combination on the RGB. But, but, in order to explain this easily, this is the intensity. The blue is the blue layer, the difference between the intensity and the blue layer. And the red is the difference between the intensity and the red layer. That's the idea, okay? Well, you have also the counterpart that is you can convert any any chrominance representation into an RGB by the inverse of this matrix. Okay, that's the idea. Now I'm going to show you how useful it will be. Let's remind that uh, here. We have the RGB representation, and it's and this linear combination translates this into a chrominance. Okay. Well, can you see here the uh, the original picture of our lab? Here we have the floor. We have a grid. Okay. The aircraft will follow these lines. Okay, according to some algorithm. And well, as you can see here, we have the red layer, the green layer, and the blue layer. Okay, as you can see here, the red line, can you see here? The red line appears clearly on the red layer, okay? Why? Because here I have a lot of intensity in the red layer, okay? But as you can see here, I have something that is white, my desktop. I have something that is white. These are the tanks remember, in the lab and all the devices that also are visible on the red layer, okay? So if I want to make a distinction between these red lines in front of these white devices, that's not useful because at the end, a computer must detect everything that is white in my, in my, in my picture. OK, but it's not useful because there are a lot of things that have been detected in my red layer. OK, the green layer is not useful because here I have the lines to follow and they obviously are not green. But pay attention here. I have the Roman numbers that are green on the original picture and obviously here they appear clearly, okay, the Roman numbers, while here the Roman numbers was, uh, were not uh, highlighted, okay? But again, everything that is white, my desktop and all the, the, the lab stations, they appear, okay, again. Let's now check the blue layer. Well, here in the original picture, about uh from the the green roman numbers there are some blue here some blue squares little blue squares that here appear clearly on the blue layer of the image can you see these are some kind of marks on the floor in order to detect uh which square you're in okay so here in the blue layer, they appear clearly, but also we have the same problem. My desktop and all the stations, okay? But what it would happen if I change the RGB that it's not useful to detect only the red stripes on the floor, what, what it would happen if I use the chrominance? Well, here we have the image 
that is the original one, the picture. Here we have the intensity, okay? As you can see here, this is more intense than other things on the floor. So nothing about intensity. This is black and white image for all televisions, okay? But what it happens on the blue layer? Can you see here that clearly we have a great distinction on the marks on the floor, okay? Not the lines, but the marks on the floor, okay? Also, the chairs are blue. Can you see here? Dark blue, light blue, dark blue. As you can see here, the chairs also are so clear in here, okay? That's the idea, okay? Here there is something blue again, okay? So something appears in here. But what it happens with the red chrominance layer? Clearly, it's very easy to detect only the lines because these are the only things in red in my picture, okay? So I'm going to use this, so pay attention to this, in order to detect the red lines of the aircraft. So my message is, the image, the picture is taken by the aircraft. The aircraft sends, publishes this picture according to the Ross language, publishes this picture to the computer, to the remote computer, which is subscribed to this topic, okay? The remote computer changes the RGB original image into chrominance. And now in this chrominance representation, we are interested only in the third layer, in the red one, okay? That's the message, that's the idea, that's the the conclusion. Okay, so the next step is to venerize, so to have a black and white picture, in order to have only the things in red in my picture, okay? Here we are so close because we have some different grays, but clearly in white we have all the red lines, okay? But what it would happen if I take this picture, if I take this RGB, okay, this is RGB, and I take the red layer and I venerize image to black and white, okay, is the, is the command in MATLAB, image to black and white, the first layer of the image, okay? The first layer, remember, if we are RGB, I'm venerizing the first layer. As you can see, this appears in, in, in clearly a white because it's red on the original. But can you see here on the floor? We have a lot of sparks because of my focus reflection, okay, here. Okay, it's clearly appears here. And then these spots, these dots in here are a consequence of this white, sorry, of these white spots on the floor, okay? So, despite you think that it's very clear to see the red color in here, it's not clear. Because here I have a lot of things that are red. Can you see here my reflection of the, of the, of the lights in, in my lab here? The reflection disturbs the original line, okay? And also, obviously, everything that is light gray or white appears clearly in my picture because something that it's white on the original picture has a high intensity in red, in green, and in blue. That's the message. So nothing to do. That's not useful at all, as I told you before. Okay? But check again the original image. Can you see here we have the green, the green Roman numbers, but we have the red lines and the blue spots in here. Can you see the blue spots? Okay? These blue spots, if this is Roman number, number five, we have five blue spots in here. Here four, then three, two, and one, okay? So clearly, when you use the chrominance layer in blue, five spots, four spots, and here we cannot distinguish uh, the three spots because the image here, the original image is very poor, okay? 
That's the idea. But here, clearly, we have the five spots, and here the four, because the original picture collects this information. Okay? But what it happened if I take, if I do the venerizing procedure on the red layer of my chrominance? Clearly, everything disappears, and it's clearer than daylight, my red line to follow. Okay? So that's the idea. The message is, after using the chrominance representation, we will use the third layer. Remember, the chrominance is Y, C, B, C, R. Because R, G, B is first layer, second layer, third layer, first layer, second layer, third layer. So for blue things, let's figure out that this line were so, so blue, okay? So if it's blue, you must use the second layer. If it's red, you must use the third layer. So this is about the second layer. This is about the third layer, okay? I suppose that this is so clear, okay? But this is a general explanation. Let's now check, can you see here the spots? One, two, four, okay, five, yeah? Let's now do a real drone capture example, okay? This is a real photograph from my drone, okay? And as you can see here, this photograph is not well focused, I know, because the aircraft is vibrating, is moving, okay? This is a real while uh, it uh, was flying, okay? And this is a real capture. Okay, this is the chrominance in red, and this is the black and white. As you can see here, here we have some kind of noise because of the reflection of the of the light okay, in, in the lab. Here we have the same. So this will disturb the final image, okay? Because this is not red. This is not strictly red, okay? This is also not strictly red. So that's the reason, because here the line is not continuous, okay? So at the end, when you venerize, you have clearly only the red information in the, on the floor, okay? That's the idea. So this is for real, on real time, okay? And the computer lasts, lasts less than 0 0.1 seconds to do this procedure, okay? Well, but what's the problem? The problem is that we have two lines, this line and this line. Let's figure that we have a line and the crossing, okay? But we want the aircraft to follow only this straight line in here, okay? That's the idea. And forget about this, okay? Let's forget about the crossings. Let's only check the straight line, okay? So then we need some morphological operations. The previous operations were done by color, okay? We use the color representation, okay? So these are what we call color operations, yeah? Or intensity operations. But now we're gonna deal with morphological operations. Well. Let's see the easiest one that is called the erosion. The erosion means that if we have a crossing, for example, we will erode everything that it's not a vertical line, okay? And we consider a vertical line, a line that starts here on the top of the, of the picture at any point on the top and ends at the bottom of this. It could be this, 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 this. Any of these lines is what we call a straight line. A line that starts in here and ends in here. That's the idea. Okay? This is what we call a straight line, a vertical line. Yeah? It's not a crossing. Okay? So, we need to build a structuring element. What is a structuring element? 
this structuring element will be a small picture, a small image. In our case, will be a vertical line, okay? And this vertical line, that it's full of ones, this vertical line is full of ones. All these numbers are ones, okay? The idea is that one means white, zero means black in a black and white picture, okay? Because this is the highest level of intensity, while this is the lowest level of intensity. So here, all these values in the matrix are zero, while these are all ones, okay? That's the general idea, yes? So we generate this structuring element. This structuring element can be a circle in order to detect round elements on an image. It could be a rectangle, a square, any figure that you can imagine, okay? But what am I going to detect? I'm going to detect vertical lines. So obviously, my structuring element, the element that will run all along my picture, will be a line with some specific length, okay? It will be 50, okay, 50 elements, and it will be 90 degrees. So that means 90 degrees. If I wanted to detect an horizontal line, this would be zero degrees. That's the idea, okay? Um, how it works, how the erosion works. Well, this structuring element will multiply all the all the elements of my picture, of my image file. Remember, my image file has a line, a crossing in here, remember, full of ones, okay? This is and not a single one, okay? It's a strip, okay? So we have here several ones in here, everything full of ones, and the remaining values are zeros, okay? Remember, here I have a 50 element straight line full of ones. These are one, 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 one. And this structuring element will run, will multiply all the values in the matrix. So when it finds zeros, okay, the result, the result will be zeros. But when it, it intersects with a part of the image that is full of ones, it will result in one. So a vertical structuring element will detect vertical lines. Because when you put this structuring element here, here, not all the values in here are one. Most of them are zero on the original picture. So this rounded value at the end will be zero. So the aim of the erosion, depending on the structuring element, will detect vertical lines or horizontally or horizontal lines depending on the orientation of the structuring element. That's the general idea, okay? Well, let's now have uh, the same example on the image, on the picture of the drone. Remember, we had this picture from this original one. This is the original. We have these chrominants in red, this vinarization, okay? And this is the black and white images, the vinarization. Uh, you must not confuse this with the intensity. This is not intensity. It's black and white. So zeros and ones, okay? So now, how can we use MATLAB in our remote computer in order to make the, this, a distinction between the vertical and the horizontal line? It's magic. Because here we generate the structuring element that will be a line of 50 elements Okay, 50. Remember that this is 360, okay? 
So we have a 50 elements, okay? And we have zero in order to detect horizontal lines, okay? And we have 90 degrees in order to detect vertical lines. Remember, zero degrees and here 90 degrees. That's the idea, okay? So depending on if you use zero degrees or 90 degrees, this will result in an horizontal detection and vertical. And as you can see, both results are strictly uh, different, okay? That's the general idea. Fine. So now let's remember our objective. The objective was to have the exact position of the drone aircraft, the center of gravity of my drone, with respect to the line on the floor, okay? And also, I want to know the deviation angle, okay? Because maybe the drone is on the same direction than the line. So these directions are parallel, okay? Are the same direction. So my only, pro my, my single problem is that I have some kind of a drift of, of a difference between both positions, but the directions are the same. So I want this to be zero, I wish. Is next week I'm going to talk about how to make this angle to be zero and how to make this distance to be zero. Okay, but first of all, I need to measure to have a measure from the from the picture about this t and this theta. Okay, so this is the original. This is the chrominance in red. Clearly, the red line can you see here. And when you have a vinylization procedure, we have this. Okay, well, here a morphological uh, operation has not been applied because we have no horizontal line. Okay, this is only for showing you how to uh, how to connect these distances. Okay, in in reality, with the distance and the angle in my picture. Okay, well, you must consider here the x-axis and the y-axis. This is the origin, okay? This is the origin of my picture. Be careful, because in some conventions, in some conventions, well, in the general point of view, the x goes to the right and the y goes down, okay? But according to my objectives in this subject, be careful. This is not general. This is only specific for my course. This will be X and this will be Y, okay? Not downwards, but upwards, okay? That's the idea. Fine. So I will, I will uh, calculate the distance to this origin, okay? And the distance means the following. If I had a red line in here, this is my red line, the distance will be the line that forms 90 degrees with the line to follow. The, this is an imaginary line. This is D, the distance, okay? As you can see here, is the 90 degrees line, okay? That's the distance between a point and a line, okay? There are a lot of distances, okay? But I'm having a look. Well, I need to calculate the normal distance, okay? And the angle will be the angle. If I have x, y, it's this angle. This is theta, okay? Well, here it's called alpha in order to make a distinction between the real theta and this fictionary alpha, okay? Because it's fictional, okay? That's, that's not on the floor. That's in my picture, Okay, remember, in this course, I will not consider the axis difference between the world coordinates and my robot coordinates. I will not consider this difference. I will work only on the picture. If you were doing the final project with us, with me in, in this, uh, with this aircraft, okay, obviously, we would consider 
this difference, the difference between these two uh, references, okay? But this is a short course, and the message now is that I will calculate the distance in the picture and the angle in the picture, not in reality, okay? I want my objective is to have the straight line here in the middle of my picture, remember. So let's figure that here we have the line, okay? Here we have the origin, and this line has a distance d of this, okay? This is the normal distance, okay? And the angle here, this, if it were a straight line, it would be zero. But now it will be more or less 20 degrees, okay? Because here is zero, so here we have this 20 degrees, okay? That, that, that's the idea. And what's the sign convention? Well, here, if we have, if we have this line, let's suppose that we have this line, okay, this, and the center is this, okay, both theta and d are both positive, okay, because the drone is at the right is on the right of the line, okay? But in opposition, if we have this, for example, okay, this, the center is in here, okay? So the line is this, while the drone is this, okay? Here, both theta and D are negative, okay? That's the convention of signs. Okay, so what do I expect from this picture? Because the center is here. Here I have a theta and a distance that both must be negative. That's the idea, okay? This is so useful for next week algorithm. The path following algorithm will use this theta and, and D, okay? And they must be negative when you're on the left and they must be positive when you are on the right, okay? Obviously, there are some weird positions like this, for example. Let's say this position, okay? Yeah, in this position, well, the center is in here, the distance, okay? Well, this is not the normal distance, sorry. This distance, the D, is positive, but the angle, Theta is negative because in this situation is positive. When you have this direction and the angle and the line goes to the right. But if you have this direction and the line goes to the left, is negative. Okay? The same as this. This theta were negative because the center is in here, my direction is forward, and the line goes to the left. So, in other words, if the line goes to the left, like this situation, can you see here, I'm going forward, the line goes to the left, theta is negative. If the center is also on the left of the line, is negative. While if I'm at the right position, a okay, distance is positive, and if the, the line is going to the right, theta also is positive. And then, obviously, you have four possibilities. This, everything negative. This, everything positive. And the two weird positions where something is positive, something is negative, and the other way around. Okay? That's the idea. But, well, this slide is only for explaining the application example on how can I calculate the distance and the angle. Well, I'm going to use the cross product product this is a very powerful mathematical tool let's say this is the original and this is the black and white okay and the remote computer must calculate automatically two points in the line okay two points in the line one on the upper section this is done automatically Okay, one in the upper section and one 
at the bottom section. I know some of you will say to me, well, here I have something on the upper section, but nothing is in here. Obviously, the algorithm is checking several lines till it finds uh, a white, it finds a one in here, okay? So the algorithm is robust. That's the idea, okay? But if you take automatically two points in the middle of this line, one on the upper part, the other at the bottom, you have its coordinates, okay? The X coordinate, remember this, it's 343, okay? So that means 343, okay? Remember that the this dimension is 640. So the middle here, the middle is 320. This is a slightly to the right, 320. 43, so 23 pixels to the right of the center of the image, okay? Well, this is 439. It's obviously uh, more to the right. That's the idea, okay? Well, what about the Y coordinate? 52, because here is at the beginning, and here 350, because here, remember that the maximum is 360, Okay, 315, okay, because here we have not reached, uh, we are close to reach the end, okay? Fine. A particular thing is that I remind you that my coordinates are going not like this, going like this, okay? Uh, um, okay, my convention is not this, but this. So the Y coordinate will be taking negative in negative numbers. Okay, that's the idea. Okay, so what about the cross product? The idea is that when you have a point, point one, this is point one, and this is point two, okay? This is point one, I will put this. I will later on explain you what's this. And you do this, the cross product with point two in some specific coordinates you get the line the line that connects both points okay i'm gonna repeat when you apply the cross product that is this between two points in some specific representation this will lead us to the equation of the line that connects these two points in the product, okay? The equation of the line, that's the idea, okay? What's the meaning of this symbol? This means homogeneous, homogeneous coordinates. That's the meaning of this symbol. What do I mean with homogeneous coordinates? I mean this. This is the X coordinate. Can you see here? 343, okay, of the first point. This is minus 52. Remember, it's the 52, but in a negative because I'm considering uh, upwards the, the, the Y axis, okay? And homogeneous coordinates means to add a number one in here as a third fictional coordinate in my point. So a 2D, a two-dimension point in homogeneous coordinates, it will be X, Y, and one, okay? Always one. And also the other point, point two, in the homogeneous coordinates will be 439, here you are, 350, but negative, okay? And the one in order to get the point in homogeneous coordinates. When you apply the cross product, okay, I, I hope that you remember what's the, the, the cross product, okay? When you do this cross product that it's mathematically built in MATLAB here by, by the comment cross, you get the equation of the line, okay? 
that's the equation of the line. These are the coefficients, okay? This is the coefficient for the x, the coefficient for the y, okay? And the independent coefficient. That means that the line is ax plus by plus c equals to zero. Well, where a, b, c are a, b, and c. Okay, that's the idea. But remember, the name MATLAB comes from Matrix Laboratory. Okay, so Matrix Laboratory means that every result will be given in a matrix form. But at the end, this array will be a, the coefficient for the x, v, the coefficient for the y, and C, the independent coefficient, okay? Well, so now it's basic straight line information. If you wanna know the distance of this line, the normal distance of this line, this is basic algebra, okay? This is, uh, if, you, if you wanna calculate the distance, the normal distance of this line to the origin, it's so simple. It's the third component, okay, of this array, normalized. What do I mean with normalized? Divided by the square root of the square parts of the squared coefficients for the x and for the y. Okay, that's the idea. Okay, this is uh, uh, the normalized third element. This will be the distance. And the distance is 304 pixels, because this is in pixels. All the image are in pixels, okay? This is 343 pixels, okay? Positions in the matrix. So the distance, as you can see, is 304, and it's this distance. This is the origin, this is the normal distance, and D is this distance in green. Okay, in the figure, okay? And this is 300. If you project this in here, you can see that it's close to the, mm, the mid, the, the mean value here, the, the, the medium here of this, of, the, of, this, uh, of this X direction, okay? But it's 304, not 320, okay? Well, what about the theta? The theta is so simple. You have uh, this comment in MATLAB is the arc tangent, okay? Two, this is because there is an arc tangent one, arc tangent so simple, okay? I, I'm going to explain the difference afterwards. But this D is because the result will be in degrees, okay? If you don't put a D, A10 2 will give you in radians, okay? But I want the result in degrees. So it's this would be this would be zero degrees, but as you can see here, this is 20 degrees, more or less, as I told you before. Okay? And it's negative and negative because the center is on the left of the line, and the line is facing the left of the drawn direction. Okay? So both are negative, obviously. Okay? So let's now focus about the A10 to D. A10, A10, simply, or A10D without the two, takes a number, only a single number, and calculates the arc that has a tangent, the arc in degrees, that has a tangent of this value, okay? But this is not so good because we cannot have a distinction between the different quadrants in the 360 degrees. But the A10 2 allows to give you the Y component and the X component, okay? So you have the Y component, and obviously, if you have this, okay, this, all the X and the Y are positive, okay? Well, here, the X and the Y are negative. If you had only a number about the tangent, here, this number in this quadrant and in this, both were positive. 
because the quotient between a positive and a positive number is positive, and the negative and a negative number are, are positive. The quotient, I mean, okay? So that's why it appears the a10 to the a102, it's because you can use the y component and the l component, okay? So in order to know the angle that is forming the uh, this line according to this reference is the a10 to d of the second component, the y component, with respect to the x component. But here I'm changing, I'm changing this component in order, I'm changing the sign, in order to have the angle, not with respect to the, the horizontal line, but respect with the vertical line. Okay, that's the idea. And this small sign change will allow me to have this number, that it's the real angle with respect to the direction, well, the real angle of the line, the, the flow line, with respect to the direction of the aircraft. Okay? Well, so that's the aim, the end of today's lecture, okay? To find the distance and the, and the angle of the line that connects these two points in the picture, okay? This will help us in the following problem. The problem of using the zenithal camera of the drone, remembering here, okay? In order to get the exact position, the D and the theta, the theta in here and the D, okay? So we have solved this problem. So for next week, we will design this controller algorithm that will not be a PI, as I told you, and it will be a path tracking or path following, path tracking algorithm. So the aim will be to make this error equal to zero. So to make these two, the and the angle equal to zero. Thank you.